in a lot of ways it's the intersection between GIS and, and data science. Not only knowing where things happen, but if, if something that happens in a certain place depends on what happens in the, in the surrounding area. Focus also on, on this uh, spatial component, which uh, oftentimes explains a lot uh, of why things happen. So right now at the moment we see a lot of traction in retail especially for uh, revenue, revenue predictions and, and site planning. We work also with utilities to help them predict the churn uh, in their uh, customer portfolio. We also work with financial institutions uh, to help them analyze uh, the performance of different business, you know, uh, businesses in order to study potential uh, investment. Other uh, common analysis uh, would be to uh, analyze, for example, mobile uh, patterns uh, to understand uh, where people move, for example, for targeting uh, some marketing uh, uh, campaigns using billboards, for example. I think transportation is a like area that uses spatial technology, spatial data science a lot. Identifying hotspots in, in roads where uh, accidents happen, for example, solar uh, fan installations, so identifying where you can find more people with a higher propensity to, to install those, those sort of uh, solar panels. And maybe also urban planning, cities, governments are going into it a lot too. I feel like in real estate and private equity, there's tons of demand for it. Just a very small increase in the accuracy of their model could result and millions more in revenue for them. Geomarketing, revenue prediction, and doing area analysis. So in terms of uh, special data streams, uh, we're working a lot with uh, global demographic data, also with financial data that shows you where people is spending the money and where those consumers are coming from. Human mobility data, similar, but only those areas where people are visiting. We work also with point of interest data, global boundaries, environmental, and road traffic. Point locations, addresses, maybe GPS coordinates, or if it's coming from, I don't know, maybe um, aerial images, remote sensing. Um, I think my major, like my pr primary language is, is uh, Python. So um, in terms of uh, the data processing part, like, like a normal data scientist, uh, we use NumPy, Pandas to, um, to kind of process the data and also to clean the data. And also uh, we use cardinal frames to visualize the data and to find the patterns of what the data looks like from your original data set. You can use everything from ensemble models to neural networks, deep learning. So Pandas and GeoPandas, uh, PySAL for example, which is also uh, specific for special data science, NumPy, Scilearn, uh, uh, well, the sci-fi uh, environment in general. We do a lot of problems um, in clustering, so spatial clustering. So there are a lot of traditional data science clustering techniques that work in the attribute space. Um, but for a lot of the spatial clustering techniques, you need to um, work with uh, problems such as contiguity. Processing data, cleaning data, a lot of the boring stuff that people don't really talk about when talking about spatial data science, and then actually modeling. Another kind of major subtype of problems that we work on are optimization problems. And so um, some of the ones that I've worked on in the past are like logistics oriented. So you need to understand um, properties of the road network, connectivity, how long it would take to get from A to B. There are lots of challenges nowadays uh, gathering uh, uh, spatial data. Uh, first, because uh, there are lots of different uh, uh, types of, of, of data um, and uh, usually they don't come into one single place. You have to go and look for them uh, source by source. The other problem is that they come into different aggregation forms, so you need to first gather all these different data sources uh, and then uh, um, bring them to the same uh, spatial support, as we say. Another one is the fact that uh, sometimes some of the data streams have anonymization in place. So we need to um, apply some, some specific measures uh, to go uh, over it. And then also the sampling bias. So some data um, is collected from sources that don't have the full population at hand. And then uh, we need to understand and, and work around the possible bias that the data has. So trying to hire a spatial data scientist is pretty hard. I would say finding people with the skills in, in kind of that sweet spot is hard. To be a spatial data scientist, I think you need a background of statistics, also have a good uh, programming skills. It's better to have deep understanding of what happened in the urban intelligence area. There are not many data scientists that knows about spatial analysis and spatial data in the market. 
Typically, um, spatial modeling and spatial data has been a field that has been developed a lot in academia, but not so much transferred to the business sector. There still is a transition, I think, between the GIS type of analysis to more uh, type of uh, data science analysis using um, spatial data. Uh, you can look on LinkedIn for, for them, but I don't think you can find many people with the spatial data scientist uh, job title. This is definitely a fast-growing um, industry. So we see uh, a lot of interest at the moment, but then when it comes into adoption, we still fa are facing some, some challenges. So we are happy on that, but um, what we predict is that uh, there's going to be more and more organizations that they will are uh, starting to create their data science practice in-house and that then what they will, have to, that they will need will be uh, the right tools and the right data and they will be fully capable to doing the analysis themselves.